So in this video, we're going to be looking at solving one-step equations. And these are the ones where there's only one operation that we need to undo. So an example we might have is you have $2 in your pocket and you go into the store to buy some cans of soup. Each of them costs 50 cents. How many can you buy? Now, if you're visual, you might look at something like this. So in this case here, we're trying to figure out how many yellow dots are in the envelope here. Now, the number of dots on this side and on this side are equal. So we can kind of see that these three here, they, they match up. So what's left over is going to match with what's in the envelope, in this case, 5. If we did want to write an equation for this, that wouldn't be too tricky. So we're going to start with x. Now, x is a variable. And basically, what we're saying with this is that's going to go with the envelope here. It's an unknown value or a value we don't know yet. And then we're going to add to that these three dots here. So this side is x plus 3. And that's going to equal this side here, which is 8. Now, the part that we got rid of, the three dots on both sides, is an example of the addition or subtraction property of equations. So basically, what that means is you can add or subtract the same number to both sides of an equal sign. So in symbols, it would look like this. So here we have a value we don't know what it is and we have a value here so these are both variables and they're equal so we can add the same amount a plus c and a plus c to both sides of this equal sign so if we were to use numbers let's say x equals 5 and we wanted to add the same amount we would have x plus 2 equals 7 so we're adding a plus 2 to the x and a plus 2 to the 5 and we have an equivalent equation now, we're basically going to be doing this backwards to go from bigger equations to smaller equations. Okay, but this is the way that we can make equivalent equations. And these are the ones that have the same solution, the same value for the variable. Let's look at this example here where we have 2.3 equals V plus 7.5. So this V is a variable. It's a value we don't know yet or an unknown value. And so when we go through to solve these, we're basically going to want on the bottom of our page, the variable by itself, an equal sign, and then its value. So right now we need to ask ourselves what's being done to the V on this right hand side of the equal sign. Well, it's being added by 7.5. So how are we going to undo a plus 7.5? Well, subtraction undoes addition. So we're going to subtract 7.5 to both sides of the equal sign. So here we have 2.3 minus 7.5. And you can think dollars with this. You have $2.30 and you owe $7.50. Now, you don't have enough to pay it off. So it's going to be a negative. And then you just do regular subtraction. 750 minus 230. Well, 7 minus 2 is going to make 5. And then the 5 minus the 3 there for 50 cents and 30 cents is going to make 20 cents there. And that's how we solve these one-step equations. We just think what's being done to the variable and now how do I undo that? So for this example, we have w minus 5 sevenths equals negative 9 sevenths. Now we do have positives and negatives and fractions in here, but don't freak out. It's not that tricky. Here we go. So we are going to want at the bottom of our page, if we're doing scratch paper, we're just going to want w all by itself and then equals and then the value next to it. So the first question we ask is on this left side of the equal sign, what's being done to the w? Well, it's being subtracted by 5 sevenths. So the next question is, how do we undo subtract 5 sevenths? Well, addition undoes subtraction, so we're going to add 5 sevenths to both sides. So on this left side, we have a minus 5 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. Those undo each other, so we just have w. And now we're going to do negative 9 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. Now this does have common denominators, so we only need to look at the numerators. That's a negative 9 and a plus 5. Well, we have more negatives than we do positives, so that's going to be a negative. And now we just subtract the 9 and the 5 together, and that's going to make 4. And then common denominators of 7. So w is going to equal negative 4 sevenths. That's the value for the variable that makes this equation true. Now looking at this illustration here, we do want to figure out 
how many yellow dots are in each of these envelopes. So this one's pretty simple to do. Remember, we have the same amount of yellow dots on this side as on this side. So if we just pair up these three with this envelope and these three with this envelope, in essence, we're just dividing our picture by two, then we can figure out that each of the envelope, envelopes each hold three yellow dots. Now, if we wanted to write an equation for this, we would say we have two envelopes, and each envelope, we don't right away know how much is in there. So x stand, is a variable. It stands for an unknown value or a value we don't know yet. And we know that this side of the yellow side of the yellow line is equal to the number of dots on this side, which is six. So we could write an equation for this illustration. And that leads us to the multiplication or division property of equations. So similar to the addition subtraction one to where we can multiply or divide the same number to both sides of the equation. So in symbols, it would look like this. So we have A equals B. A is an unknown value and B is an unknown value, but they're the same because it says equals. So we could multiply the same value to both sides. And in this case here, it's C, same value. Uh, now this also works for division. We could also divide the same amount to each side. So a quick number example here, let's say X equals five. So then two X would equal, well, two times five, which makes 10. Now, we're basically going to be doing this type of thing, but backwards. Instead of going from a simple equation and making it more complicated, we're going to be going backwards. And that's how we're going to be making equivalent equations or equations that have the same value. So let's look here. We have 8 equals negative 5 times x or negative 5x. So when we go to solve this, we have x over here. So we're going to want at the bottom of our page, x on the right hand side also. So now that we see where our x is, we ask ourselves what's being done to x. Well, for this equation, it's being multiplied by negative 5. So how do we undo multiply by negative 5? Well, the way we undo multiplication is with division. So here, the negative 5 divided by negative 5, they undo each other. So we're just left with x. And now we're going to do 8 divided by negative 5. So that's going to be a negative because we have a negative divided or a positive divided by a negative. So that's going to make a negative. And then 8 divided by 5, well, 5 doesn't divide in evenly. So we're just going to leave it as a fraction. Negative 8 fifths is the value for x that makes this equation true. So here we go. We have 0.4y equals negative 1.2. We're trying to find the value for y that makes the equation true. So at the bottom of our work, we should see this. We should have y equals, so we're going to have y equals, and then the value for y is going to go right there. So first question is, what is being done to our variable? Well, in this case here, it's being multiplied by 0.4. So next question, how do we undo multiply by 0.4? Well, we undo multiplication with division. 0.4 divided by 0.4, they undo each other. So we just have y there. Now we have negative 1.2 divided by 0.4. A negative divided by a positive is going to make negative. And then 1.2 divided by 0.4. In our brains, we can just move this decimal place over one spot. We don't need a calculator. So in our brains, we're going to do 12 divided by 4, and that makes 3. So y is going to equal negative 3. That's the value for y that makes this equation true. Here we're trying to solve 7 fifths z equals 28. So when we're done showing our work, we're going to see z equals and then the value right there. So same questions as before. What is being done to our variable? Well, in this case here, it's being multiplied by 7 fifths. So how do we undo multiplied by 7 fifths? Well, we undo multiplication with division. So how do we divide by 7 fifths? Well, with fractions, we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by 5 sevenths to both sides. So this is what it looks like here. There's 5 sevenths being multiplied on that side. And so we have 5 times 7 is 35. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 over 35 is just 1z written right there. So we still need to multiply 5 sevenths times 28. So when we do that, 
we have a whole number times a fraction and the denominator divides in evenly. So in our brains, we're going to divide by the denominator, divide by 7, and then multiply by 5. Multiply by 5. So we do 28 divided by 7 and that's going to make 4. And then we do 4 times the 5 to make 20. So the value for this variable is 20. So remember to undo uh, one operation, we just think what's being done to the variable and how can I undo that. It's fairly straightforward with these one-step equations, but sometimes undoing that operation takes several steps. But just keep your thoughts straight. What's being done to my variable and how do I undo it?